Experiences, we are left to feel unworthy, empty, and questioning if we matter. But with God, He reassures us that we do matter and we do have tremendous value. Have you been conditioned to devalue yourself? Are you settling for a lifestyle of crumbs? Do you question your purpose and value? The No More Crumbs value messages are derived from the Bible story in Matthew 15, 25 through 28, where a woman believed she was only worthy enough to settle for crumbs and never believed she deserved more. Not until she met Jesus. Jesus encouraged her to want more in her life. And with this woman's acceptance of Jesus' love, she was awakened to want better for her life. From this acknowledgement, Jesus commended her on her faith to accept the new truths about herself. The Value Journey podcast is focused on providing supplemental and suggested tools to help you accept the positive truths about yourself and guide you on how to take action steps to activate your truths. God has designed for us all to live a life that is full and enriching. You deserve victories in your life. You are royalty, you are God's creation. You are valuable. Now join me as we grow together with the Value Journey podcast. Today's guests, Magda and Nathaniel Newman, share their memoirs, Normal, A Mother and Her Beautiful Son, and Normal, One Kid's Extraordinary Journey. These touching reads don't tell the sad story of two sick people overcoming obstacles. These memoirs are the story of a family chasing normal, a normal life for their son, a normal motherhood experience for Magda and the entire family, a normal existence that many who have it likely take for granted, encouraging us to live our lives by utilizing the obstacles we face as teachable moments to become better with each other. Magda and Nathaniel wanted to share their mantra with the world, live your normal. Oh, welcome, Magda and Nathaniel. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy schedule to just share your wealth of knowledge and gifting the world with your character and just your information that you have to share to enlighten us to be better. So thank you. Welcome. <laughs> thank you so much for having us on your show, Rhonda. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Nathaniel, Magda. What would you like the audience to know about you, Magda and Nathaniel? Could you please share, please? Um, I would like the audience to know that we have um, four dogs, and they're currently all laying around right now. Yeah, we're there with us in, in the room and right. kind of watching us from all different angles of the living room. So Brownie, Cody, I forgot the other. We have Brownie, Snowball, Smokey, and Cody's in the other room. Yes. Oh, oh, that's so fun. <laughs> yeah. And breeds or? Um, you can answer. Two cockapoos and two Aussie doodles. Oh, how fun. <laughs> Fuzzy puppies. Yes. Oh, they're so cuddly. <laughs> yeah. And then we would like to add the audience to know that we are just ordinary people that um, had some hardships in the past and we were able to get through all of the hardships and we are living the normal life right now and we always wanted to live this normal life so resilient as a family and that speaks volume i think the resiliency shows the perseverance in you nathaniel and magda and jacob and russell all of you as a unit so could you please share that secret that you have to help be so resilient through every challenge and stage of life? I am not sure if, if I would call it a secret, but I feel like we had each other. I feel like um, at the end of the day, no matter what happens, you have your people, which is your closest family. And then you can rely on each other and you can go through life as a unit and give each other strength and hope and just keep that bond. What would you say, Nathaniel? I agree. I believe um, that 
She fit in very well. Oh, thank you. And Nathaniel, could you share what you're most proud of? I am most proud of, um, I'd say, writing my book is up there. Um, I'm very proud of getting my story out there. I believe other than that, I'm, um, oddly enough, just really proud of my dogs. <laughs> just having the fact that I have four. And could you both share your story a little bit with the audience? Okay, so I was born in Poland. I came to United States as a student um, when I was 20 years old. I would come every summer to uh, spend some time with my family. And I also had a job as a nanny. And during one of those summers, I've met my husband. That was back in New York. And when we got married, we had our first child. and. Nathaniel was born, and when Nathaniel was born, I was surprised that Nathaniel was born with challenges. Nathaniel has three true calling syndrome, which is one of the craniofacial differences, uh, which affects uh, bone and tissue structure of the face. And Nathaniel endured I would say around 70 surgeries since birth. And right now, Nathaniel is almost 17 years old. So there was a lot of challenges having a child who has to go through so many um, medical procedures just to be able to, to eat, breathe, talk, see, and hear. Unfortunately, Nathaniel wasn't born with all of the abilities to do all of those basic life functions. And during um, his childhood, we experienced many um, setbacks, but there was always hope that we will be able to have Nathaniel breathe independently, which was our goal, because Nathaniel had a tracheostomy. And we talk about it in our memoirs, um, how much trach affect Nathaniel's daily life. And along the way, I was diagnosed with two bouts of cancer. I wasn't sure if I will survive, the, especially cancer number one, uh, which was misdiagnosed. And I describe in the detail um, how much I've learned and appreciate how lucky we are to be alive and to have each other. So I was able to put things in perspective and able to not to worry about little things in life. So I'm trying to also teach my children that. So life is just really precious and life is really short. And if you can have an impact on others just by maybe spreading kindness or acceptance, or just being a good person, that's a lot. That's major. Go ahead, Nathaniel, sorry. Uh, I was just like, agreeing with her. Um, she's basically laying it all out. It's really good. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks. And Nathaniel, you wrote in your book, chapter on Thanksgiving and gratitude, yeah. sh shared a video on you doing, spreading the good word. Yeah. Um, so, Basically, in my video, I talked about that we should appreciate the little things. I believe I touched on it a bit in my book. Um, I'd have to go back and check, but basically... Yeah, it was page 320, I think you were reading. Yeah, and basically, I stated that we have to appreciate the little things, such as our basic life functions, since not everyone has it, and the people who don't um, often face very major challenges, both socially, emotionally, and physically. Um, and we should just do our best to appreciate everything we have. And that's so important. I feel like if you don't face possibility that you might lose some of those functions or some of those functions don't work properly, then you don't realize how much you already have. 
and you miss out on so much in life and the goodness of life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What is a characteristic that defines someone that deserves to be your friend? Um, someone you can talk to and trust. Obviously, someone you can get along with also helps. Um, like sharing your hobbies is a good part of being friends. You have more to, you know, discuss and um, talk about, but technically that's not necessary as long as you just get along and enjoy to be around each other. Yeah, that's so important. And how do we remove like the toxic relationships out of our lives? That's difficult. I say just talk it out and always make sure to have other people you trust to, you know, help you through getting rid of the toxic people in your life. Since I believe it'd be hard to find out when someone's toxic. Obviously, if it's someone you trust, you inherently would not want to instantly believe they are toxic. Um, I would s I believe in sending out positive energy. This is going to be a little metaphysical, but I feel like if you put out love and trust, love and trust come back, comes back to you. It's like a boomerang. If you are down and if you are negative, then that energy is going to find you. So be transparent, be good, be kind, accept everyone because we are so different and we have different points of views and that's what makes this world such an interesting place because we are not the same we all have different things going on in our life we have different hobbies in different interests different principles as i'm getting older i am learning that about people that you know what let's just hear everybody because we all have a voice we don't have to agree with everybody necessary but at least listen and, you know, and think about other points of views too. I agree. And I believe every stage of our journey in life, we do develop expectations of what we want from people. Daniel, what stage are you in now of what you are expecting to receive from people? I think if we don't really expect anything from people, I just, they treat me the way I want to be treated or like the way I treat them, then that's really all I that's expect, you know, the golden rule. But other than that, um, I don't really have the expectations. I meet the people I meet, and if they follow the golden rule, then they're good in my book. I agree. I agree. I have to tell you, Rhonda, we've moved so many times around the country, and Daniel had to find, and Jacob too, both of my boys, had to find a way to have new friends. And Nathaniel always found a couple of buddies that he was able to connect with over their same interests. And he never once come, came home from school upset that someone was not treating him well. Because I truly believe that Nathaniel doesn't even see that. I think he goes to life with an open heart. Right, Nathaniel? I think so. And you don't need 10 different best, best friends. You have one or two, right? I think that's so important. And, you know, as we do age, our friend groups grow smaller and smaller because you want those people that are significant to us. And you have such an attracting personality, Nathaniel. So I know everyone wants to be your friend. <laughs> Thank you. I believe that, like you said, Magda, kindness is so important. We place little judgments on where we define kindness, but I think it's much broader than that. We need to see past our biases. If we're unified as one and we can just draw from each other, gift things that we have from each other is so important. How do you live your life in kindness? I just, um, I consider myself an optimist, so I just always take it off optimistic view on anything and everything. So I feel like that's how. So for me, I remember when Nathaniel was little, we would have all different reactions when we would go out in the world. Um, my goal was to make sure Nathaniel has a normal life and normal experiences as a baby than as a child. And now I look at the pictures, I see that he did. I would take him out in public to playgrounds and parks. And 
I will tell you honestly that people reacted in all different ways. Not necessarily everyone was welcoming and not necessarily all of the children wanted to play with Nathaniel. We had situations when kids would stare at Nathaniel and run away and call him a monster. I don't dwell on those moments because I didn't want to focus on the negative experiences being out and about. But for me, being kind was taking those moments as a teachable moments and try to explain to the person that reacted in a certain way, finding kind of an excuse because we human beings, sometimes we just don't have control over our reactions. And if you see something super new to you, especially for children, it's hard to control their reactions. So I would walk up to a parent or I would walk up to a child and say, hey, this is Nathaniel, what is your name? You are probably curious why Nathaniel looks different. Would you like me to explain why? And the kids would be, yes, but I'm scared of him. I said, there's nothing to be scared. And I would tell children, touch your face, you feel your cheekbones. Nathaniel doesn't have those cheekbones. That's why his face looks different. But he is normal, just like you. Please be kind because Nathaniel might be upset if you're running away from me. He just wants to play with you too. He's different. That for me was the, those moments of kindness coming from me to try to teach others about Nathaniel's condition. And I was um, bullied as well as a kid, you know, on, on the way to school and in school for years. And, you know, it's just very traumatizing and how mean kids could be for no reason. It's just a right. shame. I am sorry to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I just love how you all tackle tough topics. You know, you're not afraid to talk about it openly. And I love that when I was reading the book on how, you know, you were open with each other. You talked about the tough topics and worked through it. And that's so commendable. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with everyone. That means a lot. Well, thank you, Rhonda. You know, as I said, like I am, I am a very transparent person and I talk with my kids about tough subjects. We, we just, going back to the family bond, we basically talk about everything at the dinner table. And I feel like my children share with me what kind of bugs them or what they're going through. I feel like because I share that with them as well about myself, because my kids saw me, especially Jacob, witnessed us both going through a lot of difficult moments in life. And Jacob is suffering from depression and anxiety right now. And he's been seeing therapists and he's been seeing psychiatrists and he's taking medication and he is getting better every day. And I am very grateful that I am able to provide this care for my son. But I also know that there is a lot of children out there that don't get to have that care. And I feel like mental health is very important. I was depressed too. I was suicidal too, because life throws some curveballs that I wasn't expected to witness and live through. I feel like it's okay to admit that you are not okay and then get help. Talk to, talk to your crew, talk to your people, talk to your family. There is no shame in feeling sad or overwhelmed and anxious. And especially right now, when we're going through this difficult time, it's COVID. I feel terrible for my kids. You know, we're kind of stuck at home and trying to figure out how to live in quarantine. I keep telling my kids, you are not the only ones. Everybody is in the same boat right now. Yeah. Do you want to add anything again? So really, I just feel really annoying what my mom said. I agree. Thank you. I will be praying for Jacob. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you. He's doing great. Okay. He's doing the light at the end of the tunnel, we have vaccine now, so yes. very exciting. Yes, yes, that's a good way to look at it. How's virtual school going? Are you adjusting? Um, I've enjoyed virtual school. I find it a lot easier and much less stressful than in-person school, mainly because, um, you know, just doing everything from my own desk, it's a lot easier. My most proud moment was probably finishing up my book um, like when it was officially published because, you know, it took a while to finish and, you know, around the time it was published was when I was finishing a lot of my very large surgeries. 
So it's kind of like almost the ending page. So that was probably that. And for me, I think the most proud moments were the moments when I received the news that I no longer have cancer. And I'm proud of myself that I was able to move on, that I was able not to live in the past, um, worrying that I will have another cancer and that I will die. It took a lot of mental exercise for me, but I feel like I'm free of the negative thoughts that cancer will come back. When you live your life worrying every day, what if, what if I'm not going to be here for my children because I will, my cancer comes back, it can affect your life. And it, it took a long time for me to free myself from those negative thoughts. So I am able to move on. And honestly, I feel like this, this, is, this is the most proud moment for me to be free. Yes, and I'm so glad. Good reports, yeah. I agree, yes. It, it just makes things a lot easier, you know? The whole like glass half full mentality. Mm -hmm. Both are so amazing. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Rhonda. So how could you advise someone to develop better characteristics, to be a better person, to improve on how their outlook on life and how they interact with people? I think it's, it's kind of down to a repetition. It's almost like um, getting rid of a bad habit or gaining a new habit, you know, just, you know, keep thinking a certain way and you know, eventually you'll know, more and more become comfortable with said mindset. Um, same with like, you know, getting you know, more positive traits. It's the same principle. I just remember developing a mantra and that everything's gonna be okay, life is good. Um, when not everything was okay and life wasn't good. Um, it takes a lot of practice. I read inspirational books. For me, books helped. For me, talking to God helped too. Um, I made God promises. Like I talk about it in my book too. You know, because for me, a good person is a person that gives back the good to the world. Your actions matter to God, not how many Sundays you spend in church. And if you go home and you are not a kind person, then it's not okay. Just be good. And I remember reading the book Secret and it was all about training your mind how to think positive. It's very hard to find that balance when things are not perfect, but everybody can learn to do that. It's just self-motivation, self-discipline. And for me, it was that mantra, like every night, if bad thoughts came up to my head that, you know, I'm not gonna make it, then I would say, no, everything is good. Life is great. Uh, so for me, that will be it. I like that. You're good. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if there's anything to add. She's very well prepared again. Yeah. We're very different. Nathaniel, Nathaniel has his own ideas and I yeah. have my own. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. And then um, also research has shown like the resilience that you all demonstrate is it's healthy actually because it developed all these other different strengths helped you to be persevering and never giving up so could you share a bit a little bit about that and then you were talking about inclusion yeah, so Nathaniel he has, doesn't have ears and the way he hears if there's like a background noise he, he just hears everything with the same volume yeah I'm sorry yes mm -hmm. so um with resilience that you you and your family demonstrate gives a characteristic of perseverance and how do you use that perseverance in all areas of your life and also to talk about inclusion? Um, 
So I feel like using perseverance, it can, you know, translate to anything, like when you're in a playing a game or when you're applying for a job. Um, you just, you know, the mindset of being able to keep going at something without, like, being, you know, put down or, like, or give up is very helpful. Um, on to the inclusion part, I feel like um, being inclusive, um, I feel like at the end of the day, it's a lot more than just letting someone hang out with you. It's, um, you know, making people feel welcome. Uh, and, you know, it can have good implications in the future. You know, it can build friendships that you know you didn't originally think would happen. Thank you so much. That's very insightful. Because in, in every stage of life, they're going to need that perseverance to persevere through the obstacles. So thank you. Absolutely. And I would like to also add that um, when we talk to children during our Zoom calls um, to classrooms, I, I always wanted to point out that, yes, we are very different on the outside because this world belongs to all of us. We don't have the same skin color. We don't have the same eye color. We don't have as the same hair color. We have different interests, but also being mindful that we might be different on the inside as well. Because for example, Nathaniel's best friend, Andy, has a mild Asperger syndrome. And so for Andy, making friends looks different than for somebody else. I always want to make sure that I point it out to children. If they see someone that is maybe quiet, maybe someone that is shy and has a hard time making friends, just include that person. Even saying hello can make a huge difference to that child. Like if someone, when we go back to school, if someone's sitting alone in the lunchroom or sitting alone during recess, be inclusive in that way too. It doesn't matter even how that person looks on the outside, but look on the inside too, because we are different too. And I have to tell you, when Nathaniel was little, I grew up in Poland, which is not a very diverse country. I came to United States and I saw the mix of everyone. And I live in New York City, which was so amazing. I learned about so many different cultures. And so interestingly, when Nathaniel was born and he was a little baby, we moved to North Carolina. And one thing that I've noticed, the most friendly, the most kind re reactions that I have received out in public were from people of color. Children, I was amazed. I would come home and I said to my husband, why is that? You know, I don't talk about that topic much, about those reactions where we're not necessarily kind, but I've never once had an interaction with a person of color that would say something that wasn't kind. The moms would give me a hug and they say, oh my gosh, you have a beautiful baby boy. And you know, and, and those acts of kindness mattered. I, I remember those moments, not the moments when kids would run away and the parents would tell me, you know what? Let this kid be a kid. I don't want to talk to you. And they would grab their kid and leave the park. And it was very hard for me to let go because I was upset. But five minutes later, a mom would come up and say, how are you? What's your name? What's your son's name? My son wants to play with him. And those were the people of color that show me this compassion. That's so beautiful to hear. Yes. Because, you know, the people of color, we face so much adversity, just meanness. So I, I come from a place of kindness always. Because right. it, it feels, you know, to be hurt, treated meanly for no reason at all. Exactly. They don't even know us. Mm -hmm. Thank you 
for sharing that. Of course. Mm -hmm. Could you share more about your book? I enjoyed it so much and I enjoyed tag team on how you both were sharing your versions of each situation. As we take a break, Nathaniel has a surprise for us. Oh, who's that? Cody? Snowball. Snowball. Oh, beautiful. Oh my gosh. So we got the books. Hey, no worries. Just anything you'd like to share. Such a wealth of information. Oh, Snowball ran away. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe I can start then, Daniel. Yeah. For me, I just wanted to be super honest because that's who I am. Um, I'm very transparent. I grew up in a family where there was no secrets. I grew up in a very Catholic religious family too. Um, so God was a huge part of my life growing up. And um, I had to play piano basically seven hours a day growing up because that was set for me. I, when I was born, we were still in communism um, regime. So I, I would say I wanted to share about my childhood as much as I possibly could in my book because my childhood was very different from the childhood that my kids have. I feel like in the United States, there's so many opportunities and kids have so much. And when I was growing up, we didn't have much, but honestly, I had the happiest childhood anyone can ever imagine. I know there was no computers and phones back then, but there also wasn't, we didn't have many toys. So we found ways to entertain ourselves by playing with each other. And I also had my piano, so I spent a lot of time uh, practicing. But I remember waiting online with my mom to get uh, meat or bread or sugar. I didn't have my first candy until I was seven years old. And when I had the candy, we split it in with, between me and my cousins and my brothers and my sisters. So everybody could have a piece. So we learn to share because I would feel guilty if I ate the whole candy and my sister wanted to try some too because we didn't get many, you know? We maybe got two pieces for all of us. So those little things, I think shape up who I am. I feel like I am a very generous person um, and I deeply care for people. I had to learn to be a bit selfish when I was sick because I was realizing that I worried about other people's problems too much. And I had to keep reminding myself if I keep worrying about other people's problems, I won't have enough space to worry about my own and my own <laughs> are a priority at the moment. So I share that in the big detail in the book as well. And I was very transparent about my reactions too when Nathaniel was born, because as I said before, earlier, we human beings react in certain ways to certain situations. And sometimes we can't hide if the reaction is not the positive reaction, especially children. And it's okay to admit that you reacted in certain way, but if you talk about it and apologize, and explain yourself why you reacted in a certain way to a certain situation, you can be forgiven and gain an respect from that other person that might feel hurt. And then you, don't, you won't take it home and you won't feel embarrassed and sad that you reacted a certain way. As long as you talk and you apologize and you're willing to learn why someone is certain way or react certain way or mm -hmm. it's just a conversation which is very important and i grew up with the conversation we talked with my parents with my family about everything so i feel like 
that comes with your childhood and the way you are brought up for me. Right. Um, what would you like to talk about? I agree. Um, I agree with what you said. I don't know how I can really add on to that. Um, like even in the book, Nathaniel, you, Nathaniel, when in his parts, he would say, my mom freaked out, right? Or my mom overreacted, right? Yeah. There would be moments like that um, that have happened many times. Because I feel like, Nathaniel, for you, surgeries and hospital, that was a part of your life. Mm -hmm. Just, just like for me playing piano, it was a part of my life, right? So for me, I didn't think much of it. That was what I was doing. That was what was planned for me since I was four years old, that I am going to be a pianist. <laughs> and I feel like for Nathaniel, when he was born, all he remembers was those many, many nights spent at the hospital. Right, Nathaniel, would you say so? Um, yeah. So he was not surprised when he had to go for big surgeries and stay at the hospital a few nights at the time because that was his, his normal. Yeah, exactly. And you always, in your book, you always show like how positive you were about it. And then you're always encouraging everyone else around you, the staff and your family. That's really commendable. Thank you. Also, Nathaniel was a very easy child because he is a minimalist. He doesn't need much to be entertained. Like for example, my other son is a different person. Jacob plays sports. Jacob is a social butterfly. Nathaniel is self-sustainable in his room, um, watching, I don't know, videos or drawing, right? So yeah. Nathaniel doesn't need to have a huge group of friends. He can have two or three Friends, right, Nathaniel? Mm -hmm. I'm very, um, that is one of the things I uh, often am given credit for and give myself credit for too is uh, my self sustainability. I, um, I'm perfectly fine, like, being alone, you know? And I am not sure if that came with the fact that Nathaniel had no choice but learn how to be okay with just himself without friends in the hospital room? Or maybe he just has it in his genes that he just doesn't need to have many actions going on on a daily basis. Because I'm, so, I'm like that too. I'm kind of like an introvert and I like to be around people for a little while, but then I like my alone time. <laughs> Because it helps me reflect, and I'm, I think I'm more creative, right? Wouldn't you think, Nathaniel, when we get that alone time to kind of process? I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then when it's time to socialize, we can do it for a little while. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. So also when we ask the question about um, the books, I wanted to make sure that our books are not sad because we are not sad. We actually are funny. <laughs> we laugh a lot. And although we talk about difficult subjects, we talk about death, we talk about cancer, we talk about surgeries that went well and surgeries that maybe not, did not go that well. We didn't want just to talk about the hospital. We wanted to talk about normal things that we did as well, because finding that balance and normalcy in our life was a conscious effort for us because our normal, if you look at it from another lens, was times in the hospital for me and for Nathaniel to make sure that we have memories of doing ordinary things like everyone else was my goal. And I consciously wanted to make sure that we do have those memories and we do those things. Just walking on the beach or playing at the playground or, right, or riding a bicycle. Yeah. Which a lot of those things came with difficulties because you would put Nathaniel at risk. But we talk about 
funny moments too, because there was a lot of funny moments along the way. And I feel like it was very important for me to point it out in the book that those funny moments happen almost every day, but you just got to look for them and make sure that you remember. And Nathaniel, would you, would you agree? I would completely agree. And I enjoyed the time that you guys were at the lake and, you know, you wanted to test the waters and, and do it on your own, Nathaniel, and swim. And before your mom was like right there, you know, watching over you, but then she gave you space and you really appreciated that time to just kind of grow and stretch yourself. Yeah, um, I agree. I like the independence she gave me, letting me like grow on my own volition. Um, it was very helpful in the long run. Magda, you took care of yourself and how the others were commending on how well healing and overcoming. You guys are remarkable. So much to share and learn and teach everyone. Thank you so much. Honestly, Rhonda, I will tell you, it's all, a lot of these things are in your head. You know, it's just the way you shift your thinking. I truly believe so. Because even if you have the best doctors and and everybody will tell you, you're going to be fine and you're getting the best possible care. If you keep thinking that you are going to die every day, I truly believe that you are going to die. That shift, it's extremely hard to do, extremely hard. And it, it takes a lot of work, but you have to do it alone. At the end of the day, take that time for that mantra, find your mantra and meditate. Spend some time with yourself and then train your brain to think positively. And you know what? I'm just speaking from my own experience. Maybe for some people is to go to church every day, right? For me, it was just, I did talk to God. I'm a spiritual person. I don't go to church every Sunday anymore. But maybe for some people going to church is going to be the answer. Like how are you going to improve of who you are and change your mindset to think positive? that everything will be okay. I believe when God, when we connect with God anywhere, he meets us where we are. That's the beauty. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You know what, one thing that I didn't really touch on in, um, in our books, and that comes up in our conversations when we um, have a podcast discussions or school um, Zoom presentations. This is something that I've been thinking lately a lot about is unconscious bias because I just want to make sure that people learn how to accept facial differences yes I want I really my goal is to make sure our community is included but also I worried now about children that are applying for colleges and jobs when someone sees someone that looks different, like what are first thoughts that come in your mind when you see someone, and especially when also someone has um, speech delays? Or and I've been asking, yeah. and I've been asking friends, and I've, I've been asking people, and I hear a very similar answer that that person maybe has mental delays as well because we are so used to seeing uh, faces that fit the standards. And if you see a face that is different, right? First thing we see is the face. Like, what are your first thoughts? The point that I would love to make is people with facial differences are not only more resilient, because they had to go through life finding their way, finding their acceptance and living everyday life, making sure that they belong. But also a lot of the children and adults with facial differences went through a lot of physical pain by going through surgeries. So they are strong, they are strong mentally i have to tell you so they, they can bring another level of diversity 
into organizations or colleges. So I feel like it's important to find all of the positive things when you see someone that is looking different. Right, Natalia, would you agree? I agree. Tanya, you exemplify leadership from the moment of just in your presence. You show that you are a leader. That com commands respect, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, that's very nice. Are you preparing for college? Do, are you looking into colleges? Um, I am. I'm um, starting to do that. We, um, me and my dad want to go check out colleges once, like, you know, we're allowed. And um, yeah, so I am getting ready to apply for colleges. Do you want to share with Rhonda what do you want to study? Uh, I want to study veterinary medicine. I, you mentioned that in your book, but I know that was when you were younger, but you still do. That's wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> he also wanted to be a spy yes. when he was young. Yes. But I think being a vet, it's like more realistic <laughs> okay. career choice. <Yes. laughs> I had a lot of people ask if Jacob wants to write a book about um, the mental health and being the brother of a, uh, a sibling of a child that of someone that is different. And Jacob calls himself the Pluto effect because he feels like his whole childhood, we were focused around the sun, which was Nathaniel. And then he was just farther back still, still within the distance, but not in the center. And honestly, I, I talk to Jacob and I try, and I feel kind of guilty sometimes, but you know, I had to put things in perspective and find my priorities. And this is what happened, Jacob. He, at least he's getting help and we are able to talk about everything. So that's very important. And that's the important so, communication means everything. Because when yes. you know you pretend that it's not there or the issue is not there, it just festers into more. So it just can grow, yes. grow into a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to get things out of your chest. Are you letting us into your home and your family through your books? Because I feel like I know you already. <laughs> oh. You're my new friends, so thank you. <laughs> How are you, friend Rhonda? Thank you so much thank for. You. for you're you're so lovely and kind and although too and i virtually hug you guys i wish i could meet you in person <laughs> come visit us in seattle oh i wish i i will though i will try <laughs> we are able to travel again yeah we should meet yes i would love that i would love that <laughs> yeah. so in closing i i just wanted to read a quote that you wrote in your book nathaniel thought it was so very valuable, perfect way to close. And it goes, separate who someone is from what they look like. Looks don't matter. Be grateful, challenge, appreciate what you have. We have so much more than we realize. And I'm so thankful that I had the opportunity to meet you all. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to be thank a you. person because of you both. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Rhonda. Thank you. Yeah. Give my best to Russell and Jacob. I know you learned so much from Magda and Nathaniel. So until next time, I'm Rhonda Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Magda and Nathaniel's books are available for purchase at Amazon.com and Audible. Their full biography is on our website at www.rjnomorecrumbs.com backslash podcast.